welcome everybody to the what is it is it august oh my goodness yes. to the august edition of the cincinnati ruby brigade this month will be a little bit different i've been the host for the previous ones um but this time will be a little bit different i'm going to give the microphone and the computer over to Bill Barnett today, and he's going to talk through Active Record, um, some of the basics of it. We kind of glossed over that in the previous ones when we talked about routing and scaffolding and things like that, um, because it's a very deep topic. In fact, I think maybe the deepest that you can go in, in Rails ends up in the Active Record side of things. Um, so without further ado, because this is uh, going to be an action-packed kind of a demo and presentation, I'm going to hand it over to Bill and let him take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. Uh, as you can see here, we've got a lot of stuff to go through, so I'm just going to highlight it briefly. Um, we're going to revisit Rails generators. We're going to learn a little bit about Microsoft's Visual Studio Code and some of its helpful features. Uh, and we're going to remember to um, move the mouse every once in a while so we don't get logged out. Um, we're going to uh, uh, expand our use of Git a little bit for source control. We're going to explore a tool called DB Browser for SQL, which will allow us to kind of look at the internals of an SQL database. We're going to um, quickly do an introduction to Rails routing controllers and views, just very high level skimming it, um, just so to bring context to the other work we're doing around Active Record. We're going to implement our first feature request. We're going to um, learn about Active Record, including associations and migrations. That's the big takeaway and learn something about rake tasks and what those are and use the Rails console a bit. So we got a lot to cover. Um, this is this document you're looking at is a gist on GitHub. I'll provide a link to that so you can go through and, and you'll have code and, and uh, commands to run if you, you know, uh, for uh, whatever purposes you might need them. But there are some prerequisites. I'm using Ubuntu 20 LTS. Um, I've installed Ruby Node and Yarn, um, and I've got Visual Studio Code installed. Those are links to uh, YouTube videos where you can see how to do that for yourself. And so let's get right back into it. I'm going to copy these commands. We're going to do Rails New, Active Record, and then the code command is what launches uh, Visual Studio Code, and that's going to put us right into the, our projects project there. So just going to I'll be cutting, copying and pasting a lot, so you'll see stuff going on there. Um, and then we're going to take a look at, once this is all done, um, running the Rails new generator, um, we're going to uh, open the integrated terminal in Visual Studio Code, which if you work in the terminal in your um, IDE, your a development environment, then uh, you have nice little um, functionality that can help you quickly navigate the files and stuff, and you'll see that. And then uh, we're going to do some of our source control management um, on the command line in the uh, in the IDE, but uh, we'll look at the the uh, source control view in code, and you can see uh, uh, you know files being um, added and committed that way. So this will take a couple minutes. Rails setup is a lot um, more complex than it was back in the day. A lot more reliance on JavaScript than you are now. So pretty close. Everybody take a sip. So I'm just going to grab these first two git commands once we get into, this is uh, going to launch Visual Studio Code. And from here, I'm going to switch over here to the source control view. Um, 
and then I'm going to open the terminal. And you can see everything um, that we just generated through that Rails generator has this U, it's untracked currently. So I'm gonna paste in the commands that will add everything, then I'm gonna commit it. But what you'll see here is Git doesn't know anything about me. Um, so it's saying, please tell me who you are. And I'll show you where that plays into things, but for now we're just gonna, oh, sorry. I'm gonna run these commands in the terminal and you'll see where those show up in a second. So, uh, of course. Oh. All right, do it on the fly. Um. You've got a comma oh, there. Yes, comma, thank you so much. All right, now if we do um, list out our Git config, you can see Git now knows who I am and uh, what my email address is, and you'll see why that's important in a minute. But since Git complain, I, you can use the up arrow in the command line. And, uh, commit message go here it is so then when I commit it I can look at the and you see the changes that happened over here in our source control I can now look at the log and this is the the commit that I just did I like to use if if my commit is a result of running a single command I just put that command as my comment or my message and it knows it's me and it has this uh, hash which is points to this specific commit in the repo. So just high level stuff. Um, if you're trying to commit code, once we get to that and you get that errors, error message, um, uh, that's how you get past all that. So, all right, so where were we? Where were we when uh, we left off with Tim's demo? Um, we, did, we used the Rails generator um, to generate the tweet. So I'm just gonna real quickly run having a terrible time with because I'm trying to move fast I just need to slow down because I know we're going to be tied on time just take it slow so again we'll run the command here we'll generate the tweet scaffold which has a username that's a string and a message that's a string you'll see all the changes show up here in the left column and then we've added everything it'll run a little slow now i'm going to commit them and you'll see everything will be committed and it'll disappear from here and now if we look at the git log again just to demonstrate we're you know we're showing this nice little history of commits and it's in reverse chronological order so the most recent commit is at the top but you'll notice each one of these SHAs or these hash values is different. It points to a different um, uh, um, commit to the code. So, all right, so that's all good. And now all the experienced Rails developers are saying, wait, Bill, wait, but I'm doing this for a purpose. So thanks for hanging in with me. We're gonna start up the Rails server and then we're gonna go to the browser and we're going to look at what's going on in localhost 3000 that's where our rails app should be yes uh, it'll come shortly it's coming. sorry do i need to rush further faster okay and so we have our first encounter with active record and it's telling us we have a pending migration error so one of the things Active Record permits us to do is express our um, uh, knowledge in our uh, the structure of the um, the underlying database in Ruby code rather than SQL and manipulate it through code rather than manipulating it through um, straight um, SQL as we did back in the day. So I'm going to stop this guy and I'm going to run 
uh, another Rails command, db migrate. This will migrate the database such that we had in our, um, when we created the, uh, the tweets, we created under db in migrate, this migration that creates the table and sets up those, uh, the username and message. So that's there in code yet, but it's not been persisted to our database yet, or uh, the transformation hasn't been made to our database. So we're gonna do that. Um, and then one thing I'd like to show quickly is a, a tool in Linux called um, uh, DB Browser for um, SQ or SQL Lite, and um, uh, there's in the gist that I'll link to later. I'll provide the link to. You'll see the command to install that via uh, Ubuntu Snap Utility, um, and once you do install it. You can simply just open database, uh, navigate to where your SQLite uh, 3 database is in the app, which is in um, wherever the Active Directory demo is in the DB folder. Um, and you'll notice some, you know, these tables, if you browse, or let's look at the, the yeah, let's stay in browse data. There's a couple tables in here. The most interesting one for, at the start is the schema migrations. And notice this, uh, this version field has this timestamp in it. That timestamp matches the timestamp that's on the file name for the migration you created for create tweets. So that's how it keeps track of what migrations have been run in the database. Then if we look at the tweets, we see here we've got an empty table. There's no data in there yet, but um, that's all. That's where the data will be stored. That's what Active Record is for, taking the information from Rails and persisting it in the underlying uh, database. Um, so let's go back here. Let's do. Um, so let's add. DB schema since we've run our migration. If we look over here, you saw the little change um, that uh, schema RB has been uh, added. We're going to do git commit the message, and we did Rails DB migrate. Okay. Um, let's do a quick word about routing. Um, and if you do control P and type route, you'll get the route RB file and config. And there's, we see the uh, resource that is our tweets that we're gonna be um, persisting through active records. Um, one thing you can do with uh, routes is define a, uh, a route for your application so that when the application loads or starts, when we do Rails server and you go to the root of your application, you'll see here, this used to be that Rails screen and maybe I should have shown you this before we did it. Still starting, still starting. Maybe it didn't start. Let's look. No. Hmm. Here we go. The server says it's rendered. I don't know. The browser's hung up a little bit. There we go. Okay. So notice we're not at tweets. We're just at the root of our application. But here's our tweets. Um, let's go ahead and commit that guy real quick. I'm going to 
kill the server. Okay, let's add some data. And as you saw here, we can look at the, this is our tweets table, I'll refresh it. There's nothing in there currently. Um, let's create a new tweet. Oh, sorry, I stopped the server. You know what? going to run this guy over here and we'll use our terminal in the app for other purposes. It's interesting. It's having a lot more startup trouble. All right. No biggie. We'll get through it. Um, all right. Added one new tweet. Tim's going to say, and I'm going to add a few, a couple from each of us. All right, so that's all good and well. We can see we've got tweets here and they've been persisted. Um, let's look at the data in the database. All right, we see here, there's our tweets, here's our um, the message and the username. And we've also got these interesting fields created at and updated at. And this is another thing Active Record just kind of gives you out of the box. As you're inserting, information in tables, it creates a created at and updated at timestamp. And then whenever you update a record, it updates the updated at um, table. And there's this ID field, and we'll come back to that later. But for now, um, that's kind of what Rails uh, Active Record has done for us. But um, how did it do it? Well, actually, let's do one more thing. Let's do, let's like edit one. We get an update, we go back to our list, um, we can delete them. This is JavaScript, a little pop-up uh, that, you know, are you sure, sure? All right, let's look at the data again, refresh our view, and you see the update from Tim has been uh, made and persisted, and his second tweet is now gone. Um, so how does all this work? How does Rails do this? The secret um, in this particular case is in the um, tweets controller. And let's look at that. I'm gonna close this terminal for right now. We've got our server running over in the other window. So um, this tweets controller is kind of like the glue that ties everything together. And we already see kind of um, examples of active record at work. We have this uh, tweet model that the scaffold gave us and it's got this all method. So on the index page, we want to show all tweets and we assign those to this instance variable at tweets. Um, show appears to do nothing um, when we're showing an individual tweet. Uh, when we're looking at new tweets, we just call tweet.new. Okay, that's cool. And we assign it to an instance variable. Edit appears to do nothing. Um, create assigns the tweet instance variable to um, the result of calling tweet new with these kind of weird 
tweet parameters, whatever those are. Um, and then we call save on the tweet object, which is an active record object. So we know we can save them. Um, we return, we redirect to the tweet um, as a result of the action if it's saved. Um, update has this update method with some tweet parameters called on the instance of the tweet. That's interesting. Um, and even uh, the destroy method calls destroy on the tweet. That's all active record. Um, and if we look at the tweet model, it's interesting in as much as there's, you know, this is a, um, and let me go here. It, tw our tweet class is inheriting from application record um, an application record it inherits from active record base. So we're getting all of the um, goodness from active record without writing a single line of code. And let me go back to. So there's none of that. Um, we, we haven't had to write a single line of code yet. And all of this controller code was generated for us. So down here, there's some interesting things um, in the controller that, where some more active record stuff's going on. This uh, private method called set tweet uses the tweet model and finds a tweet with this params ID thing, whatever that is, and assigns it to tweet. And then the tweet params. So, um, What's that all about? Well, uh, if we go, if we bring our terminal back up and we want run rails um, routes dash C, we can give it a controller name, tweets controller, oops, spelled properly. This will show you the routes that, oops, maybe, did I, was there a typo there? I uh, can't see. Yes. Thank you. Um, this will generate the uh, routes that Rails knows about for the tweets controller. And you'll notice that there's a mapping taking place here with this ID. So tweet slash one will be the, the first tweet. Um, tweets index doesn't need the ID because it's just gonna show us all of them. Um, so these are, this is the glue that kind of um, wires everything together um, for the controller. But we noticed that um, show and edit didn't have, you know, there's, there's no active record goodness going on. Well, these before actions run set tweet only on the show, edit, update, and destroy methods. So those are methods where we need active record to kind of all do this one specific thing, which is set the tweet. And then uh, when the browser, when you load up a form for creating or, um, or updating a uh, active record backed uh, model like the tweet, then those parameters are sent through to the controller and the controller uses this tweets param to strip out from the params. It says I'm requiring an object in the parameters called tweet and I'm only permitting you to update the username and message. That's where the rest of this happens, but that's a topic for another day. I just wanted to address this tweets param thing and, and the magic of how that kind of comes to life. So, um, I know that was a lot that was dense. This is recorded. You can come back and look at it and you'll have access to the, um, the gist file. So you can kind of explore that. There's a little few more notes in there that um, you can look at and gain some bit more clarity on that. We were already down here on um, in step eight, we'll kind of control or show you more detail about that. So let's talk about our first feature request. Um, We've been asked to create a view that displays all the tweets for a specific user in bold and include that user's bio. So now what? We've got this tweet object that we're persisting thanks to active record and we can update it and delete it and all that other interesting stuff you've seen. But that doesn't seem like 
the bio is an attribute of a tweet. It really seems like it's an attribute of a user themselves rather than the the uh, the tweet. So we'll go back to our cutting and pasting. We're going to um, generate a scaffold. Let's highlight that just for a second for the user. Um, that's going to have the username on there and the bio, which will be a string. So let's back to our copy and paste ways. run the migration. Not sure why the system's so slow, but there we go. We'll make the commit, we'll add everything and make the commit. All right, so um, one quick thing, I wanna look back at the routes file and you'll notice that it's generated this new resources um, uh, users in the route, just like we did for the tweet. Um, we kind of try to keep everything, or I do, um, as a, um, in alphabetical order here in the, uh, the routes file and pretty much um, anywhere you're um, working in like a class or whatever, alphabetizing the class methods, that type of thing. So we're going to save that guy. And that's just as a kind of a, as an exercise to say, um, we can amend that last commit because really that should have been part of that previous commit that we just did on uh, generating the scaffold. So I'm going to do git add on the config routes file. And then I'm gonna go back up to our commit message and I'm gonna pass in the amend flag. So that's just gonna tack that additional change I made to that previous commit. Just a quick little, you know, show you how to amend a commit. We'll get to source control or some of you know it. If you don't know it, don't worry about that bit. Um, let's and then so this kind of brings up this refactoring. Active record, um, one of its uh, main uh, utilities is the ability to aside migrations, which you've seen some of, is these associations. And what the associations do is it's a way to encode, express the relationship between objects. So we're gonna go into the tweet model and we're gonna say that the tweet belongs to a user. And currently we're gonna say that that's optional, that we can have tweets that don't have users. That's only gonna be short lived and it it's, has to do with the reason of why we're, um, you know, once you, uh, uh, build the app without um, generators, you know, specifying the whole app in one shot. If you, if you build it progressively, you come up, you know, the database can kind of fight back and uh, push back on you. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and say, right now that relation is optional. And then on the reverse side, relationship, these associations are always two ways in Rails, should be. Um, a user has many tweets. So a tweet belongs to a user and a user has many tweets. So let's go back and make those changes.
All right. Um, that's fine. That kind of ties things together from the rail side, but that really doesn't do anything for the database side. Um, there, that relationship kind of exists in rails, but it doesn't exist yet here in the database. So um, let's generate another uh, migration and we'll show you this one's a bit, it's got some uh, um, black magic that's happening here. Uh, and I'll explain that in a second. So one of the neat little things about using the IDE, if you control click that link, it'll open it in the browser. So this Rails generate migration, add user ID to tweet with user colon references is uh, actually creating a reference. We didn't have to write any of this code to the tweets table for the user. And uh, it's currently saying null false, which would mean it's required in a foreign key true. So what that foreign key true and null false does is um, it uh, verifies the of, um, referential integrity on the SQL database side. Right now, we have tweets that don't have a user assigned to them. Um, and we'll get to that. But for now, I'm going to take off, whoops, I'm going to take off the um, foreign key constraint and I'm going to set null to true just for the, whoops, just to simplify things and speed things along. So, um, We'll run our migration. Oops. Rails DB migrate. Thinking out loud, or my thinking informed my typing there. All right. So what's that look in the, like in the database? Let's go back to our browser. Um, and actually I had to do this previously running through this, reload the uh, database. Oh, sorry, I wasn't even on the right one. So tweets now, if we look at it, has this user ID field, but there's no data in it. It didn't know how to magically connect our tweets to the right users. It has a username over here but it doesn't know the ID of the user with that username out of the box. So that brings us to a really um, neat part of Rails. Uh, when you look at um, like Rails DB migrate, what is that? Uh, well, actually that's a rake task in the DB namespace um, that migrates the database. And well, what does that mean? Let's show you. Let's build one really quickly. Try to do it quickly. Um, we're going to use a generator again. We're going to say uh, Rails um, generate a task in the in the data um, uh, namespace, and we're going to call it extract user from tweet. And then if we look here, if we control click on our rake file, it's got this kind of um, you know, placeholder stuff. We're going to write a little Ruby very quickly. I'll go over it. We're not going to write it, but again, we're going to copy and paste it. Oops. And so what are we doing here that we've, we rake, a rake task is preceded by its description. So we're going to extract users from the tweets. Our task is extract user from tweet. Um, given the environment, and we won't worry about environment, ultimately we'll learn about development and test environments and then production environments and staging. But here's our active record. So another thing feature that active record provides us is we have a tweet which inherits from active record and we can give it these kind of SQL-like methods where we're gonna say, uh, get all the tweets where the user ID is nil. 
So where there's not one assigned and we're gonna assign that locally to a low instance variable called tweets. Now we're gonna put out a message that says we're extracting the counts method, which is another thing is um, uh, active record methods, these return active record collection proxy, which is essentially a collection of these active record models, which will all be tweets. And uh, you can ask collection proxies what their count is. They're innumerable. So we can just say, give me your count and display that to the screen. Then we're going to iterate over each one of the tweets and we're going to refer to it within this block as a tweet. And then we're going to use another active record thing. When we, we in the first um, uh, demo, we did the, uh, we generated the tweet scaffold. Well, we also now generated our user scaffold. And so just like our tweet class inherits from active record, so does our user cl class. And we can use um, a method called find or create by, and then give it the username and say the username of the tweet that we're iterating over. Um, that's going to be our user if it exists, if it doesn't exist, we're gonna create one with that username. And then we're gonna assign that user to that tweet via this active record update method. So we're just gonna go over each one of the tweets and associate them with the um, their proper um, user. And then we're gonna print out a done message and say how many users we created. So let's save that guy. And then let's run it and you'll you'll notice it's just kind of it flows from uh, if you follow the paradigm on how we uh, create things in rails um, a lot of stuff just works uh, so rails data colon extract user from tweet let's run that And you see extracting uh, users from three tweets. And when we were done, we created two users. Let's go over quickly and look in the um, our database. Let's now, well, actually, let's refresh the tweets. And you see now we have um, user IDs associated with each one of the tweets. And then if we go over and look at users, there's our users. User number one is Bill. User number two is Tim. There's our bio. We don't have any bios yet, but again, our created at and updated um, fields are there. Let's go back. Let's add everything. Commit it. Okay, and real quick, just look at the log. And you can see we're just building up this nice little history of uh, from the most recent um, commit back um, with a timestamp of, of the work that we've been doing on the application. Um, but we did some stuff like that relationship. We kind of, we broke it such that, um, uh, or the referential integrity that Rails will naturally um, um, protect for you. We've kind of taken those guards out and we need to fix that up. Uh, and actually, I just realized I am, I've been rambling on here uh, for a bit. I don't hear anyone else. Are there any questions I can ask? I know that, or answer, I know this is a lot right now. Um, we've got 15 minutes left. I think I'll get through everything, but um, uh, any feedback thus far? Bill, I appreciate how you have um, taken like a real world example of taking data that isn't there for a new field and then populating it. That's um, a lot of times it's easier just to pretend like the data structure is already all, all there for the entire finished product when you're presenting and walking through changes like this is really helpful. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, then let's, uh, let's dip back into um, 
I'll go down to my section 12. We've moved on. Well, we haven't done that bad. So we're going to restore that relationship and we're going to do what we've done many times already. And you should start to have a, somewhat of a grasp of. We're going to generate a migration to fix the user tweet reference. Um, let's do that guy. Command click on that. And again, we've got this change method. We just need to def, uh, express in Ruby code what change we want to make to the database. And oops. So we're going to change the column uh, name in the tweets table uh, named user underscore ID and it's an integer and we had set null to true to allow for a short time for uh, tweets to exist that did not have a user associated with them and we removed the foreign key and I always forget how to spell this so I'm gonna I before E except after F O R or something like that. Um, and foreign key, we're gonna put that back on. So this now, if, if you, once we run this migration, the data base schema will be exactly as what Rails would have generated for us. So let's run that, our migration again, DB migrate, not Rails migration. And we'll, Next, move on to, um, oh, there's one more change we need to make, which is uh, we made this um, in tweets, we made belongs to user optional. So tweets could exist that um, um, did not have a user. So we're gonna say it belongs to user and that will enforce a um, validation on the tweet that you'll see shortly because we're gonna jump into the Rails console. Um, so let's add everything again. Um, did I save that guy? Let me look. Yeah, okay. And get, oops. All right, so we put that back. Now let's let's look at something. I'm gonna jump back over here to the big terminal window. I'm gonna kill the server now. And we run Rails server to start the server. Um, you can also run Rails console, which is the th one of the, oops. Uh, This is far. That's interesting. Hang on. I'm going to ignore it there. Oops. I'm going to guess if you CD up and then back into it, it might work again. You know what? Yeah, let's do that. I was just thinking the same thing. CD dot dot takes us out. CD minus takes us back to where we just were. We'll use the up arrow um, and we'll run Rails console. Ugh, that is really weird. Okay, I'm not. I'm gonna set that aside for now. Let's do it here. Rails console. But I'm kind of there. We go. Okay. So what we did essentially is we loaded up the app like the server in a REPL, um, which is a okay, Tim. Give me the REPL abbreviation. Uh, run, I don't remember okay. what it is. Runtime environment, <laughs> something. Anyway, so what it, what it means is you now have a command line that's smarter than just like your system command line. This command line is running um, Ruby. It's running the app. And so it knows stuff like user count. There's two users in the system. 
so you can actually start to query the app and 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 um uh, you have everything that's available to you in the app is now available to you in the command line. So let's do some, uh, let's play around with active record a little bit and say, we're going to assign to a local variable called first user, user dot first. And then if we look at um, first user and see what we got back from the database, we got this object, which is user with ID one, username Bill, is doesn't have a bio, he's created it there, there and then. So the cool thing that um, that association that we created does allows us to do stuff like uh, first user dot tweets. Give me all the first users tweets. And there you see, we have this active record association collection proxy, collection proxy like I just talked about before, which is this collection of, um, and we can, of tweets and we can ask it for its counts. And it says, oh, this uh, first user has two tweets essentially is the what you're answering there. So um, let's get the first tweet. Um, and we could say uh, uh, tweet dot first, but let's get it from the first user. So and if we look at first tweet, and this is all active record doing this for us. You can see the queries that it's actually running, the SQL that it's running to hydrate these um, Ruby objects or these local variables with Ruby objects. Um, and then you can see the tweet has ID one and the username of the person who created his bill and its message is howdy y'all. Um, so, and then the cool thing about that is then that reference is two way. So we can ask the first tweet for its user. And there you go, you've got uh, user ID one, name Bill with no bio yet, pretty lame, but there you have it. Okay, so what was all that hullabaloo I made about referential integrity before? Let's create a new tweet. And you saw this before the controller, the new method on the tweets controller. So, oops, oh, I made a, okay. Now I have to remember to repeat that type. So if we look at our new tweet, it's just an empty tweet. It's tweet ID is nil and it's username is nil and the message is nil. Let's ask a new tweet if he is valid. Uh, so, we'll, and it says false. How, how does an object know that? Well, that's active record. Active record gives you this valid method. Um, that checks whether your object is valid. Well, what's, okay, what what are its errors then? Active record allows you to query the errors on the object. Oops, valid, did, did I? Oh, messages, sorry. There we go. And it's saying the user uh, is violating its must exist constraint or validation. And so um, if I were to try to uh, save this tweet now, um, bad things would happen because it's it can't save it um, because the user has to exist. So I could assign a user to that and then save that tweet. So just the console is really kind of a cool tool that you can use to um, get inside your uh, application, exercise the code. I use it for debugging and actually for writing code. You can write methods in the cons in the um, Rails console and then paste them up into your um, your application code once you get all the mechanics of everything working out. So, all right, we're doing pretty good on time. I know I'm coming right up to the hour, but um, we're just about through it here. Um, so that was, let's see, we did the, we did the commit to fix the user tweet user reference. We did the console. Let's do our little cleanup. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the big thing to notice here is we've got this data repetition, right? If we look at the users um, table, um, there's Bill and Tim. And then if we look at tweets, uh, there's Bill and Tim again, and really the 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 tweet the user 
is now saved over here in this association through the user ID. So this username is really redundant at this point. So sticking with the um, single source of truth um, principle that we want all of our, you, we want there only to be one single source of truth about an object in our application. Uh, let's go ahead and, and take care of that. And we're going to create another generation. Everyone say it with me. Um, create or generate another migration. Thank you. Control click that guy, and we're going to say remove column from the tweets table called username. Save that guy, Rails DB migrate. That should be familiar to you now. Uh oh, did bad things, should I have copied and pasted? Anybody see it before I do? Oh, too many E's and tweets. Hey Bill, I figured it out. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> uh, I think there's one extra E in the tweets. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, good. Everything's fine with the world, right? Let's just run the Rails server. And I know you experience Rails devs are saying, but Bill, wait, wait, wait. Okay. There really is a method to my madness. Oh man, what's this? No method error on tweets index. So it's pointing at this line of code that says tweet.username. That's right. We just deleted tweet.username. Uh, so the way we fix that is um, we're going to, let's, let's just do it real quick here rather than this kind of elaborate way I was doing. Um, tweet index view this guy. So um, tweet.username becomes tweet.user.username. We save that off. We reload this page. And voila, this is now coming from the user that's associated with this tweet. And then I went a step further and let's do that quickly. And if you have to drop off, I apologize. I'm gonna stay a little long and Tim, you uh, stop me um, if, if I must to, uh, um, and finish this cause it's just a few more minutes. I'm gonna replace the contents of the tweets index with this. code that's in the gist and then we'll show you all this to do um, this little bit which is you didn't see much of a change but under the username now is a, a link and if I click each username individually um, it will link to the notice now we're on the users routes and here's Bill and um, I'm gonna add my bio which is Chief Cook and Bottle Washer. Um, and I'll save that and then I'll go back and here's all the users in me with my bio. And then if we go back to root, we're back at all the tweets, but we still haven't implemented our feature request. And that feature request says on this view, I want to have, or actually on this view, where I'm looking at an individual user, 
I want to see all that user's tweets. Active Record makes that super simple and I'll show you how. We're gonna grab this other file and we're gonna make this change to the user's show, which was all generated by Rails. Um, we're just gonna insert this table and I'll go over the, um, the code very quickly. I'm gonna kill the server down here for now. And in here between the links, I'm going to insert a table that has all of the, um, just like we were listing the tweets on the tweet index page, I've created a table that has the message and the posted time. And then for that users, tweets, each one of those, I'm going to reference those internally in this loop as a tweet, and I'm going to show its message and it's created at. I'm going to save that. I'm going to remember to restart the server. And then when it comes up, I'm going to reload the demo of the users page. And there we go. We've got our username, our bio, and all of my tweets with when they were posted. Um, and that was a lot. I'm not going to go back and do that last commit. Uh, I just want to, oops, I keep forgetting to click here. Um, I'd go and do the commit. There's, if you look at the gist, there's further reading on the active record pattern that inspired Rails's active record gem, which is Rails implementation of active record. And then always go to the Ruby on rails.org guides for kind of like your first stop when you're trying to learn a technology or a specific piece of Rails. Um, guides.rubyonrails.org is your friend. With that, I know that was a lot. Everybody take a deep breath, take a sip of your favorite beverage, um, and I'll hang out for questions. Thanks, Bill. Um, I, I had to step out for just a minute um, to get sure. some food. Did you show what it looks like to revert a migration? Um, no, I didn't. Dang it. Okay. Um, let's look at the last one I did. Do I have an easy one? Yeah, that's like the remove column. Uh, let's. Uh, I bet that one is not re re removable. Or yeah, that might be. But well, no, it it'll be, it'll it could put, be modified yeah. if you want. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think it should. And let's do. Hang on here. Let me clean up a little bit. Maybe clean up a little bit. Close the right. Okay. And let's kill the server for now. And what Tim was just referring to was Rails DB rollback. And that's a command that in uh, typically only ever use this in development, though you could use it on a production instance. Um, certainly uh, you'd want to uh, test it uh, very thoroughly before you did the rollback. Um, anything, and we'll get to testing, I, I hope, at some point um, in uh, our, all of our uh, talks, but uh, right now we've kind of glossed over all that. Forgive me, Jim Wark. Um, but so let's see if that migration is reversible. DB rollback will roll back the last migration that you did, and it's just reinserting that username on the table it won't oh you're wiser than i am tim what was the issue it had uh, so if you want a migration to be reversible you have to tell it exactly what it would have to do to revert it oh is cases. this mm -hmm. is this only the new... reversible if given a type yeah. so if you go back you have to tell that column that you've removed what it would look like if it were to be added back in which when you mm. do add column oh yeah have... yeah because it's yeah sure so i think you can just say can I just put integer on that or not integer string string? I think so. 
Yeah, I think you can just throw that on there. Sorry. Yep. Uh, you want, I think it's a lowercase yeah, s. Yeah, yeah. 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 So when you do this, the cool thing is, and I usually do this as a practice just just for, I think it's yes. really just for posterity, for other developers mm -hmm. who come behind me if they need to revert something that I've put yes. in there. I always make sure that when I have a change that I, that I, I do a migrate and then I do a revert and yes. then I do a migrate again. Um, yes. there's, I think there's a way to do that with like redo or something like that, but yep. I usually do it manually just to make sure it works. But yep. this is actually a really cool thing because because we have all of these migrations and change control, yep. you reverting them, even going back 20 or 30 steps in your database's schema versioning is possible because when you set up your your migrations to be reversible and most of that you get for free. It's just this one case right here that's kind of funny that we ran into. If you just do a couple of things just slightly differently, then you get the ability to basically play, like you can go all the way back in your database's timeline. And so if you need to like test a change from three months ago in your development database to see if there's something going on there, you can basically revert all of the database schema changes back to the point in time where the code was where you want to test and then you can check out the branch where you were three three months ago and and see what's going on so it's really cool because it gives you this opportunity to do almost like a time machine on your development database and if you're having a really really bad time it also kind of gives you a time machine for your production database but hopefully you never have to use revert in production <laughs> yeah that's really cool awesome <clears throat> sorry having a coughing fit here <coughs> uh anyway <laughs> thank you all oh man any other questions i'll do my best to recover my voice <coughs> uh we'll edit this out tim <laughs> <laughs> i'll just turn this into like a uh a oh my goodness on youtube like a youtube video yeah there you go uh Go i knew it. i've got uh, so i'm taking this medication that one of its side effects is these uncontrollable coughing fits that happen randomly and it always happens when i'm headed to kroger to do my shopping <laughs> and i'll be smack in the middle of the produce section checking out the lettuce or cucumbers or whatever and then i i tear up because i try to suppress it but I can't. So anyway, this is the pandemic joke portion of the thing. Everybody looks at you. <clears throat> I assure you, I'm not COVID positive. Anyway, all right. Any other questions? I just um, that was a lot of great information, Bill. This is Ben. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Away. A lot Thank of you. really good information. I was just wondering. And sorry about your coughing attack. I'm sure talking for an hour <laughs> solid doesn't help yeah. with. Uh, yeah keeping the voice up anyways and it, you know, it's usually at the worst of times that that stuff yep. happens but yep. um hey um is there somewhere where i can um in github or um where i can follow your notes and your kind of um yeah i will i will put a note for this is a gist that i created that kind of basically outlines it all i will probably one reason i was doing the um the git commits along the way was I'll either add this to the Cincinnati RB Git um, GitHub account, which I think is um, Cincinnati. Whoops. Yep. I think that's a thing. <clears throat> and if I can, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've got rights here. I'll commit <clears throat> all that code there. So you can go back and forth through the code and look at the particular changes and all of that. Um, that'll be there. So I'll post this on the uh, Discord server so you can see all the incremental code changes. You can get access to this gist also um, and pick through there and kind of see. Um, there's, there's other work. I would not ship this feature as it is currently. Um, like the new tweet form would have to be, you know, you'd have to assign a user to it. That tweet form is broken now. A couple other little cleanup things that you could do is like an exercise. But yeah, this will all be available. Um, just check the uh, RB discount uh, Discord server here in a couple uh, in an hour or so. Okay, great. I appreciate that. Yeah, that would be good to. Uh able to follow along step by step and kind of reproduce and, and play around with all this stuff. So, but that was, man, that was super helpful and very like, I, I appreciate your 
uh, teaching style. It's very approachable stuff, I think, for anybody Thank to you. quickly get in and, and start getting their hands dirty. So, man, Thank really you. good stuff. I'm looking forward to the next one. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ben. Yep. Anybody have any other questions or comments? All right. That said, what should be our next topic? Uh, you know, I have it written down, but I don't actually have it in front of me. Um, we'll, we can follow up in the Discord server okay. awesome. for it next month. Um, I think in between now and then, I'd like to have at least two labs um, at different times, either during the weeknight or during the weekends. Um, so if you are interested in exploring some of this and, and kind of seeing a little bit more of it from the perspective of somebody who can mentor you and, and you know, you can make mistakes in a relatively safe kind of playground environment. Um, just uh, maybe comment in the Discord server with a time that works best for you. Uh, I've tried to do a poll a couple of times and I think it's a little bit harder for me to like ask the question of when than it is for somebody to say, hey, it would be really helpful for me if like during a weeknight I could have some help. So if you, uh, if you reach out, I'm certain that we will be able to help with somebody uh, being able to jump on a Zoom and, and kind of walk through stuff with you and, you know, just explore. Because I think some of this is really fun when you take all the pressure away from having to like deliver something that works to somebody who's expecting it from you. It's a lot more fun to be able to just play with it and see what happens and solve problems that you come up with and, and are fun for you. So um, that's kind of what we want to do with those, those lab concepts. And so if you find yourself interested and when it's, you want to spend a little bit of time with somebody who can help guide you through some of the tougher parts of it or wherever you get stuck, um, let us know in the CNC Discord server and we'll, uh, we'll set time up to help. Um, I guess that's it for now. Um, I'll, I'll post some information about the next one in the video from this one. Um, Bill, you're gonna post the notes. And so thank you everybody for joining. Um, sorry we went a little bit over, but it looks like some people who needed to probably already dropped. So I hope it wasn't too much of an inconvenience for anybody. Um, Thanks for joining the August meetup. Appreciate it. Everybody. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, Bill, you very much for your, uh, for your presentation.